Hey guys, welcome back. I'm one step closer to making the ultimate overland camping rig in my 2023 Jeep Gladiator. And what I wanted to do today is try to install my Isco VL60 mini fridge that I've had for a little bit over a year on top of my deck drawer system. And the biggest problem that I'm gonna have with this install is the height of this bed rack versus the height of this decked drawer system. And the reason that's a problem is the Iceco VL60 is one of the larger Iceco mini fridges and I want to put it on this slide system. And to be able to fit this fridge in there, I'm going to be limited to about a maximum of 23 inches. The 23 inches is going to include the height of the mini fridge as well as the height of the drawer system. And the Iceco VL60 comes in at about just a hair over 18 inches, 18 and a quarter. And based on the picture for the slide, I don't think that it's gonna be more than about one or two inches off of the top of the deck drawer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this slide unboxed, set it on top of the drawer here, and see with the drawer, the slide, and the mini fridge, if I have enough room to make all this work. This thing actually feels pretty nice. Well guys, I got the slide unbox. It feels pretty solid, feels like a pretty good aluminum and steel combination, but I didn't see any hardware to mount this to the drawer system. So I might have to do a little pause while I get the hardware situation figured out. I'm still gonna go ahead and set this in just to see how it fits. So the good thing about this deck drawer system is I can tell based on these little divots right here where the screws are that hold this thing together. And so I pretty much anywhere in here can drill little holes throughout the deck drawer to get this thing to seat. And in fact, the way the rails line up, it's almost like they perfectly line up uh, with the holes here. And so what I wanna do is go ahead and set the mini fridge in place and just see how much space I have there. So another possible concern I'm gonna have with the fridge is because of the height of the rack and the placement of the fridge on the deck drawer, I have to make sure that the fridge actually clears the rack when the slide is fully extended. And so with this thing fully extended, when it's finally mounted, I'm gonna have just about two or three inches of clearance from the fridge to the end of the bed rack there. That way I'll be able to open up my fridge, whether I'm opening up this way or that way. So there's something that I'm realizing about these Overland bed racks that I didn't think about at first, but is essentially common sense. Anything you have inside of the bed is exposed to potential theft or anything like that. And one of the benefits of having my fridge so high is that I'll limit the ability of someone to actually pull this out. So when it's secured in its position, they're not gonna be able to actually lift it out over the bed when the bed is locked. I mean, I imagine if they try hard enough, they'll be able to get it, but it's gonna be a little bit harder of a target than they might expect at first. So another thing that I'm starting to realize about having the fridge in this position is it's gonna be almost impossible for me to access anything inside of the fridge without getting on the tailgate. Luckily, I'm still pretty limber, but that is something to take into consideration. These fridges are pretty heavy. Once I get it installed and bolted properly down, I do have to keep in mind that when I wanna get up in there, I will have to get at least on the tailgate and maybe into the deck drawer. The good thing is I'm in the first locked out position. I'm not gonna lock it out into the second position because it's not secure, but from that position, I can open the fridge and I can at least reach my hand pretty far in there. So if I have something I wanna reach and I know where it's at, I'll be able to get it without getting inside of the, or on top of the tailgate here. And now I just wanna see if it clears that second rung. Oh, oh perfect. So that's absolutely awesome. That means that when I have this thing properly installed in the bed of my truck, I'm gonna be able to access that fridge when the tailgate's down. Before I make such a bold statement that no one's gonna be able to steal it from back here, I wanna go ahead and at least try that myself because now that I'm really looking at it, there might be just enough clearance. So there's just the perfect amount of clearance that if somebody did wanna steal it, they could figure it out. So. That means I'm not going to be able to leave my truck anywhere long-term unsecured with the fridge on it. So that's something to consider. If you're doing an overland camping build, you might be better off getting something that's a hard or a solid enclosed 
cover. That way your stuff is more secure when you're not around it. The holes on the slide are about 10 millimeters in diameter. So I went a little smaller and got some 3 8 inch bolts. And I got them a little longer because inside of the deck bed, there's essentially a honey, you know, comb shape square grid that I have to pass with these bolts. And in fact, I might have gotten my bolts just a little shorter than I need. So I'll, I'll check that out in a second here. But what I ended up getting was a 25 pack of three eighths by 16 pitch thread uh, nuts with a silicone lock. And then everything else here is three eighths. And I picked up some rubber rubber grommets that I'm going to put in between the slide and the bed to try to help with some weatherproofing. I'll let it rain a few times and see if I need to remove any bolts later and maybe put some silicone around them. But I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. In addition to that, I got some larger washers and I got these washers because they're about the size of those grids. So if my bolt passes through all the way, the pressure of the nut will be held on by the grid. This isn't necessarily the best way to secure because the washer is doing some tension support, which is not what the, these are designed for. But with the weight of the system, I don't think it'll be too much for this washer. And I can always monitor that if the washer or the bolt feels loose later, then that means that the washer has folded a little bit and it might be uh, sinking into the grid. Something I need to be careful about while drilling these holes is there are three metal bars that secure the wings to the centerpiece of the deck top and so i want to make sure that my holes are not in line with these metal bars because i don't want to drill through those bars and right now i have what i believe is this rearmost hole which will be supporting the largest amount of the load when the drawer or the slide is fully elongated because it'll act as a lever i want to make sure that this hole is clear on the, any supports for this metal bar. So I'm gonna slide in there real quick and take a peek and see what it looks like inside. And you can't really see it because it's kind of dark in here, but I did go back and check and that spot is a perfect spot for that first hole. I'm less worried about the middle holes than I am about the side holes because all of the support is pretty much down the sides of the main compartment of this uh, deck drawer lid. Another good idea might be to drill a smaller pilot hole and then see where that pilot hole comes out. But I feel pretty good about this hole being just the right size. And I'm on drill screw, so let's go ahead and break the seal. Oh, perfect. So that was a perfect hole. I didn't hit any blockages. If I had hit one of those cross member beams, I would have had more resistance for that drill. So I just punctured the hole and now I can try to see if I can fit that bolt in there. So this next hole is going to pose a little bit more of a challenge because I can't really reach it, but there is a gap right there, maybe about a quarter, a little less than a quarter inch between the hole and the surface. And that's due to this opening right here. I'm happy with the positioning. I just don't want to make any leaks. So I'm going to go check in my garage and see if I have any grommets or other rubber material that would serve as a good gasket for that location. So luckily I have this uh, floor mat from my Toyota Sienna, which I recently got rid of. And I'm going to take a strip from the side of it right here, just using these little tin snips. I know this is overkill for this cut, but it's cutting smoothly through there. And I'm going to put this along that edge. I'm going to cut some of this hump off though so it's not so bulky. What I can do is double it up or triple it up in that location. Cut these down into smaller squares that that cover that gap. Because remember the point of those bolts is not to hold the fridge to the surface, the fridge slider. It's to keep the fridge from popping off when I have this thing fully elongated. And there's probably better ways to make these holes, but I'm just gonna use this and just push the hole through with the drill. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the bolts installed. That way I can get this fridge on. I don't wanna draw out this uh, installation process too much longer. The rest is pretty straightforward. I think I'm gonna do six bolts total 
four in the back, and then two up front just to stabilize it. The ones in the back are doing all the lifting work when this thing is fully extended. So I feel like that's probably my best bet. And I also want to minimize the number of holes that I put inside of this surface. So I just want to do a quick update on the progress here. So that's the, the most load bearing bolt right there. And then in the middle, I ended up having to put a carriage bolt in there to close that hole because the, the waffling was too close to where the nut and bolt would uh, go into that location. And then, so just to add a little more security, I went ahead and put that third bolt on this side. And moving over here to the other side, I've got two bolts kind of side by side right there. Those are perfectly secured. I did put a little bit of rubber gasketing in between all of these nuts and bolts to try to prevent any leaks in the future. And then I wanted to show you guys, I've got this fully extended. I ended up, so let's see, I ended up unable to use the, the factory holes. So this factory hole right here, and then this factory hole, but I just drilled the hole right here because the whole purpose of this side is to just keep this from bouncing just to keep the whole thing from bouncing when uh, when I'm going down the road. And so I'm gonna put one good secure nut and bolt right here and that'll give me, I think, the confidence to, to carry my fridge on top of this slide without worrying about it bouncing off. So there's that six bolt firmly in place right there. I honestly think that that's gonna be absolutely enough, enough bolts to hold this thing from bouncing around while I'm going down the road. Now I do understand that this deck drawer system is not really meant to have things mounted on it in this manner. And so if one of those holes should fail, I'm not going to go back and blame decked for that because obviously it's not meant for that. What I can do in the near future is get myself some flat metal bar stock and make brackets that will more securely hold those bolts on a larger surface area spreading the load. But by doing that, I will protrude a little bit beyond the smooth surface of the top of the deck drawer. And so I have to be careful if I'm putting anything in there that I don't want to scratch or get snagged on those bolts. So maybe I'll do something with like carriage bolts that go up. It's really going to be kind of a fine work to get those really dialed in. But for now, I'll be careful when I have this thing out, making sure I don't put too much load on it. And if possible, I won't pull it out for very long and leave it just hanging out there. Twist it up high. All right, now let's put this other stuff in real quick. So the last major step of this install is gonna be securing the two straps on each side to keep the fridge from bouncing around uh, while I'm going down the road. So this fridge did come with four straps. They're not locking. They're really just good enough to, uh, to keep the fridge from bouncing around. So I may end up putting a lock, like a bicycle lock. I mean, it's not gonna keep a, a dedicated thief from stealing the fridge, but a bicycle lock will, will do what I like to do, which is uh, say, keep the honest people honest. These are just simple cam straps right here and i may end up cutting some of those straps off later but that one feels pretty good now that i have the process figured out the second one will go on a lot easier so i've got that facing where i want it i'll go ahead and put this to the end here so it's kind of like a triangle keep those forces pulling outwards and then right through that cam buckle just straight in those are some pretty some pretty substantial teeth there so so that side's not going anywhere. Now we'll check the other side and the fridge is not loaded down right now, but it is pretty much, besides when I add food, it's pretty heavy or as heavy as it's gonna be. The top of the drawer there is not flexing at all. So I don't really feel like it's too much weight. Now keep in mind, that's a long lever arm. That lever arm is like almost three feet long. So the max load on this slider is 200 pounds. But let's just suppose, because my fridge is only about 50 or 60 pounds, I put 40 pounds of food in there and that'll give me 100 pounds of weight with the fridge and food. When this thing's extended at its maximum length of about 36 inches, then between, and I, I would have to measure this to get really scientific and use my statics you know, skills from college, but the, let's say 36 inches, 100 pounds, that's three feet, right? So you're talking about 33 pounds plus or minus on the end most portion of the, of the slide here. And 
that 36 pounds or 33 pounds or whatever it was further divides in half because there's two bolts there and then maybe a little more because the other bolts are supporting it a little bit so we're talking about 10 to 20 pounds per bolt of stress in the upward position and i will never like lean on the fridge i will just have it slid out like this and only put food in and take food out when i need it i am in the great outdoors so the lighting is almost never good anywhere i go but i'm gonna go ahead and get this i'll do the farthest one because it's the hardest one right this is going on no problem once these cams are tightened up there's really not there's no slack and it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere so that's perfect and save the easiest one on the back here for last so the fridge is pretty much where it's going to stay during any of my adventures in this jeep and i'm not too worried about the weather so one thing about these Iceco refrigerators is that they are, they're not like waterproof, but they're generally okay in light rain. And right now I don't have my rooftop tent that I just ordered on the vehicle yet, but when I get that on there, it's gonna provide a little bit of cover from the elements while I'm out doing my adventures. And so I'm not too worried about the, the fridge here getting wet. I've had this fridge for just about a year now and i've used this one primarily throughout the winter last year in my minivan camper and then for a certain period i took it out and was using a different fridge in my minivan camper but that other fridge is not really suitable for this uh, more rugged environment that i'm going to have with the jeep so i'd feel comfortable spraying this down with a, a light hose if i need to if it gets a little too dirty and another thing that i really like about this ice coat fridge is that it sips power so when it's on i'm going to plug it in here in a second and it's loaded down with food and it's at a steady state running temperature it really just sips power now these fridges do take a lot of power to get down to temperature so if you put ambient temperature drinks or something in there that compressor is going to run and run and run until the drinks are cooled to the right temperature but once you have this thing settled in i'm talking like two or three days after plugging it in it does not use a lot of power so anytime i do go out there i am gonna hook this up to my power station charge it up get it going for a few days before i go camping that way i'm at a minimal amount of power draw while i'm out in the wild i don't have plans to go solar on the jeep just yet i am looking at some options but the tent that i ordered has a curved surface so i might end up putting one of those flexible solar panels on there i may also put a solar panel on the roof of the jeep here or on the hood i've seen different options but to keep this thing running you really need a 100 watt solar panel like dedicated to maintain the power output for this and that'll give you just a little bit of leftover and if you go for more than a day without direct sunlight so for example two days without direct sunlight 100 watt solar panel won't keep you charged up beyond that second day so for me ideally a 200 watt solar panel will provide all of the power that i need to have at least one or two days of no sun whereas on the next day when the sun comes back out it'll charge it right back up so this ice co fridge is the vl 60 d that means that it's a 60 liter or 60 quart somewhere there fridge and it has a divider in the middle so this is a dual compartment i can run both compartments at whichever temperature that i want them to run at and my only real gripe that i have not with just this fridge but all these mini fridges in general is that red tip on these power cables is a a marine it's called a marine style tip and that's designed to lock in and twist in a marine style 12 volt outlet but for a lot of our car charging outlets it doesn't um, maintain the connection like i would like and so usually i cut these off and in fact my other fridge i cut it off and i replaced the end with a more standard car style charger and i haven't had any problems with it coming out but that's the one main thing that i'm i'm not too happy about in general with the mini fridge industry is these little tips right here i did a complete review of this fridge on my channel last year 
So if you're interested in really seeing all the details on this fridge, check out that video later. So the fridge started right up. I am running off of this lithium battery and it's currently set at, let's see here, zero degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Fahrenheit, low battery protection. This one I'll put in fridge mode. This one I'll put in freezer mode. That way the things that I need quicker access to, I can just put right here. And as I need access to them, I can just dig in there and get whatever I need out of there. And then this one will just stay in freezer mode and if I need stuff out of there, I'll get up into the bed and get that. So it's not too hard to reach into it as I have it set up right here. But as I said last night, this is going to be a little more of a, you know, I'm not going to be getting into it frequently because of the, the height of it. But if I didn't have this deck drawer and this thing was directly on the bed, then I'd honestly be losing all this space above with the fridge in there and so i'm actually happier with the fridge like this it's relatively centered i've got plenty of room on the deck drawer to put more of my overland camping gear as i build this out so hopefully in the next week or two i'll be able to get out and do some traditional tent camping using this vehicle as my base i do want to get the rooftop tent on and usable but i don't want to miss out on all this great weather that we have right now so if you enjoy watching my content please consider subscribing give this video a thumbs up later you'll be able to check out this fridge and the rest of my setup and join me on my journey in my jeep gladiator if you have any questions about the fridge the slide the drawer the bed rack any of the projects that you see on my channel feel free to drop those in the comments i love hearing what you guys are up to otherwise check out this video where i go through some of the reasons that i think everybody loves their jeeps and i'll see you guys over there